Good morning, folks. It is Tuesday the 14th of December, and our Advent reading for this morning is Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. So let's read that together. At the time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for the census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He travelled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. To give birth to her firstborn son, she wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and led him in a manger because there were no lodgings available for them. You know, whenever we think of the Christmas story, uh, we have this lovely picture in our minds about a lovely time and uh, Mary and Joseph in this lovely stable surrounded by some nice animals. But the reality was very different. The people were forced to go to the town of their ancestors to be registered for a census. That was the Roman Empire's way of knowing how many people they had, so they knew how much tax they could collect. It was because the Romans obviously were ruling um, the nation of Israel at this time. They had invaded and taken it over, just as God said would happen if the people didn't follow him. And because they didn't, then they were conquered. They had to do that. And as a result of that, Mary and Joseph had to travel. Now, we quite often think about Mary sitting on a donkey she probably did, but we, we don't know that for sure because it doesn't tell us in the story. But it says that while they were in Bethlehem, the time came for the baby to be born. And the baby was laid in a manger because there was no lodgings available for them or no room in the inn. It wasn't an inn or a hotel like we would have in our days where there's all these guest rooms. Basically, it would have been a spare space or maybe a, a house had been built with another room on it. And that's where you would have lodged or you would have lodged with family. You would have stayed with somebody in your family. But because so many people are packed into Bethlehem, everything's full. There's no space anywhere. They end up in a stable. Stable could have been just a bit like a lean-to on the back of a house. It could have been at the back of the room of the house where the animals were. Sometimes the animals come in to help keep everybody warm. It could have been a bit like a cave <clears throat> at the back of the house. But it certainly wouldn't have been very clean. It would have been very smelly, but that's where the baby Jesus was born. And that's where the the prophecy of a coming Messiah starts to be fulfilled when this little baby is born in this hound of David, in Bethlehem, as a promise to us. As you start to read the, the whole story, you start to see all the promises of God coming together. You start to see all the prophecies that were written long ago, everything starts to fall into place with the coming of this little baby. And it's just incredible to see how the Bible is from start to finish, the story of Jesus, the story of a promise, the story of restoration or healing, um, or the, the how our relationship with God is put right again through his promises and through this coming Jesus. The Bible is a love story. It's a story of how God loves us as his people. We need to read it in its entirety. We need to read it from start to finish to see it all come together. And yes, there's lots of bits in it we maybe don't really get, we don't really understand. There's lots of bits about the laws which God set up for his people. But it shows us how he established a kingdom with them, how he established an earthly place for them. It also shows us the, the lineage of people or the, the heritage or um, the genealogy, as we would call it as you see all the different people listed. And we even have that in Matthew's gospel to see the, the, the genealogy of Jesus, to see how he is related to the line of David. And that was Matthew's way of showing that Jesus' coming was a fulfillment of prophecy. And now the baby has been born. Such an insignificant thing in one way. Babies are born every day, every minute of every day. Um, but yet this baby is so, so different because this baby will change and transform us.
Over the next few days, let's continue to read this story about this baby, about what happens around the birth of this baby. But let's pause and let's thank God for this baby's birth. Dear God and loving Heavenly Father, thank you for the birth of your son. Thank you for how all the promises come together and how Jesus is born in Bethlehem, in the town of David, born of David's line, so that we can have our sins forgiven. Lord, thank you at the start of this week for an incredible story, an incredible fulfillment of prophecy. And Lord, help us to learn how to trust you, how to trust your word, how to believe that it is true, that you have done this because you love us. Help us to let you in. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Thanks, folks, for listening. Join us again tomorrow as we hear the continuing story. Till then, God bless.